Thank you so much for coming to visit our school, Dr. Shepard. All of us teachers are really excited to hear how we can use cognitive neuroscience to understand student motivation and emotion. But of course, contemporary theories depict motivation largely in cognitive terms. Most motivational processes have cognitive components. How so? Well, self-efficiency, for example, refers to perceived capabilities to learn or perform behaviors at designated levels. It is a cognitive belief. Motivational processes may be represented in synaptic networks, as might processes involved in self-regulation, such as metacognition and goals. Wow, this kind of neurophysiological research on motivation and self-regulation variables would help to bridge the gap between education and neuroscience. Yes, so there are two kinds of neural counterparts of motivation, rewards and motivational states. Aren't rewards a key component of behaviorism? Behaviors that are rewarded tend to be repeated in the future, right? Yes, but cognitive and constructivist theories on motivation postulate that it is the expectation of reward rather than reward itself that motivates behavior. The brain has a system processing rewards. Many brain structures are involved, including the hypothalamus, prefrontal cortex, and amygdala. The brain produces its own rewards in the form of opiates that result in a natural high. So this suggests that the brain may be predisposed towards experiencing and sustaining pleasurable outcomes? Precisely, the expectation that one may receive a reward for competent or improved performance can activate this pleasure network, which produces the neurotransmitter dopamine. So dopamine can be produced by the expectation of pleasure, anticipation of reward, as well as by the pleasure itself. Yes, and dopamine increases or decreases when there is a discrepancy between expected and realized rewards such as when a person expects a large reward but receives a small one. Oh, so the dopamine system can help people adjust their expectations, which is a type of learning. Indeed. However, dopamine production is idiosyncratic. The same level of reward or expectation of reward will not motivate all students uniformly, which suggests that additional brain processes are involved in motivation. So, teachers who plan to use reward systems must learn what motivates each student and establish a reward system that can accommodate changes in students' preferences. Exactly. Watch this video that further explains the effect of dopamine and the expectation of rewards.